This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of West Haven Gold, Mr. Gareth Thomas. Gareth, how are you today? I'm very well. Thank you for having me, Gerardo. Nice to talk to you again. It's good to have you back on. You just announced some excellent results a few days back on April the 16th. Let me read the headline. The last time you and I chatted, we talked about the importance of continuity in the different zones and, of course, grades, which eventually, if you build a mine, translate into margins, right? And the headline is just spectacular. It reads... West Haven drills 51.77 meters of 4.22 grams per ton gold and 46.42 grams per ton silver, including 27.85 meters of 7.51 grams per ton gold and 83.94 grams per ton silver at the Shovel Nose Gold property. You're fully financed for your 2021 exploration program. Congrats on the hit. Give it a little more context for us, Gareth. Sure, yeah. So we announced that uh, last week there, and it's nice to see the, the stock uh, going up from our, our lows of 50 there or, or, or close there to it. So uh, about a 39% jump, which is which is nice to see. I think uh, we started this year out, uh, we announced there when we last spoke, we were going to be doing a inaugural uh, or a maiden resource on the south zone and that's where that that headline you you read out came from but we'd never we'd never done a hole closer than uh, 50 meters um uh, apart before so for us to to go in and drill within the south zone uh you know where we've had you know upwards of 400 uh gram meter plots there was it was nice to sort of see the the continuity and, and consistency of the grade there by this this hole. So it's, it's nice to remind our shareholders too, that there's going to be more uh, intercepts like that coming from there. We, we know these will certainly add to the, the ounces as we work on this maiden resource too. And um, obviously not the, the same headline, but we're, we're drilling the uh, FMN uh, zone towards the Fran zone, filling that gap as well. And we're, uh, you know, since we last spoke, um, <clears throat> we're starting to see some, really interesting looking veining in there as well um you know we announced uh you know 8.75 meters of uh you know sub gram there but certainly certainly seeing things in there that are encouraging even in the last couple of days here so um we're obviously trying to keep one finger um or, or i should say our pulse there in the south zone while drilling some holes that will add to the uh, overall resource, we believe we're just uh, getting into that, but also exploration drilling at the FMN and, and Franz is um, is ongoing and we're, we're liking what we're seeing up there as well. You mentioned that 8.75 meter intercept and that's hole 150 if we're talking about the same one. And that was at 0 0.70 grams per ton gold. It should be noted that that's pretty near surface. That was right at 25, starting at 25.71 meters, right? Yeah, that's correct. And that's um, another thing as we, the thing that I often, um, it, it's not, it's easier said than done when you're, when you're looking for often what, what can be described as a, a needle in a haystack. And sometimes you, you know, when we, when we find these things, it's uh, especially when we had the major uh, discovery on the South zone there, you know, that took us, um, you know, obviously not drilling what we're drilling now with, with two, three drills, we're doing very small programs, but you know, that took us, uh, 65 plus meters and, you know, six years to get that high grade intercept. Of course, we're uh, doing things much quicker now. We found the three new zones last year, but even when we're seeing things like this, it's the veining, um, obviously not a earth shattering result there that you just uh, mentioned, but what we're seeing there is that we're, we're getting very anomalous gold in these, this area that's had relatively, um, very little drilling done in, in the in the consideration in, in in the big picture. So for us to see what we're seeing, and uh, we're starting to see multiple meters of quartz veining, which is uh, very encouraging. And that's what we were seeing before we had the big intercept in uh, SN 1814 and, and SN 1811. We drilled uh, a deep hole there, 626 meters. But from there, what Peter and our, our technical team saw was that we were definitely below something of significance. So uh, we really think it's just a matter of time here at the FMN before we 
um, start sort of piecing together all these holes, a bit of a, you know, a science experiment in some ways, or, or a lot of geometry, if you will, trying to find out where is the heart of this uh, vein, where, where's the gold being precipitated out. So um, you know, we're getting some, uh, you know, an almost golden places for sure. But I, I think it's just a matter of time before, you know, our next step out is going to connect with one of these things. So uh, yeah, we're quite quite encouraged on on what we're seeing uh, so far at, at FMN and obviously South Zone. We're we're drilling some step outs now at South Zone too, and um, like I said, we we hope they'll add to the overall uh, flavor of uh, or, or of the resource that we're going to have uh, at the end of this year, Q4 of 2021. I noticed uh, your exploration manager, who you just referenced, Peter, there starting to talk about um, deflecting somewhat towards the north, right? And and possibly defining what he describes as a kink in the structure. And those are important, of course, because if you can vector in towards that higher grade, then as you said, the anomalous gold isn't earth shattering or, or you know, a big headline, but it's, it's, it's the process. It's how you vector towards that higher grade um, type of hit, right? A hundred percent. You, you nailed that pretty good there, Gerardo. Um, yeah, what Peter mentioned in his quote there in our last, our last news release, I, I was up there uh, speaking with Peter there in the office on Friday in Merritt, and we went through his leapfrog models. And, you know, sometimes it's easier to look at these things in a more 3D um, sort of light. And, and what we see there is at the FMN, where we thought this was going towards the France, we are, we're now seeing this might be a splay that's heading more to the north. And, and we're doing oriented core, I should mention, too. So these we're getting a ton of good information on, um, you know, measuring these vein angles and where they where they might be coming from. It's a bit of a process, as you just mentioned there, too, uh, getting all this information, which some some sometimes can take a little time and figuring out. But um, from from Peter's perspective, he can see those things quicker than most, and he thinks that this is definitely going more to the north, where we know we have the Franz outcrop there, more to the northwest and. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a uh, telling few holes here as we start to close this cap, gap more on, on where this potential higher gra- uh, grade zone will be. So it's um, it's exciting. But, uh, yeah, like as you said, it can be a bit of a process when you're uh, you, sometimes you just need to drill uh, to get to these things. And that's what we're doing. Well, you're cashed up. You have the treasury to continue to drill. You have excellent infrastructure, which leads, of course, to lower drilling costs. So I think uh, you're in the sweet spot. We have gold cooperating a bit today. Let's hope that trend continues. Uh, walk me through what it looks like the next quarter or two for assays and the resource estimate that you're looking to prepare. Yep, will do. So uh, as mentioned here and, and mentioned before when we spoke last, we're still predominantly an exploration drill bit story. We got a lot of good targets here. Um, so for continuing on at the FMN there, as, as we just talked about, we got a drill in the south zone where we're, we're, we're adding uh, to the continuity there as well. Uh, we're looking to drill the Franz, um, the Franz zone to the northwest as well, where we drilled, uh, once again, not a, a super flat, f- flashy intercept, but late last year we drilled uh, three and a half meters of, uh, I think it was 0.7 again there, but what Peter and the team saw there was a, a four and a half meter wide um, sort of calcite uh, vein, which with more um, characteristics of somewhere up or, or up higher in the system. So we're, we're we, and we've now done geophysics uh, around there. We did some DC resistivity surveys, which indicate that this thing's probably been down faulted or down dropped. So what we were picking up there is probably the, the higher parts of the system and we need to get underneath that. So uh, we're hoping within the next week, uh, week and a half, we'll be on that target at France. Uh, we're, we're still following up on the FMN and, and the drill in the south. We're looking to get a third rig here uh, in the near future as well. Then we have um, some pretty obvious targets. As mentioned, the third vein zone uh, to the north is carrying on there. That's open at the Lear. Then we have a few more targets uh, down to the southwest called the Curtin and Brookmere which um, we, we, we discovered the Brookmere many years ago. It's a nice looking vein on surface, albeit no, no gold numbers, but we're seeing very good pathfinder uh, elements in there, good indications that we're once again high up in the system and, and what's below there. So we'll be testing, uh, drill testing the curtain, the Brookmere, and then about four kilometers as a crow flies to the uh, east, we have the Romeo, which is a kilometer and a half um, 
long hydrothermal breccia where we have some very nice pathfinder anomalies and, and even gold there on surface. So um, lots of targets that we're, we're just trying to, uh, when, we, when we use all these tools, the CSAMT, the LIDAR, the soil geochemistry, we're um, working very hard and diligently behind the scenes here, trying to piece all these tools together to, to help delineate these targets and really firm them up. So um, yeah, many, many targets, which, which is gonna lead to uh, lots of news flow here um, should have consistent news flow now. The, the labs are a little slower towards the end of last year, hence it took us a while to get some results. Um, but, but those things have uh, seemed to sp sped up quite a bit. So, um, yeah, then we're, we're working um, towards that, uh, that uh, maiden resource come end of this year. So um, cashed up, as you mentioned there, we have about 11.5 million um, cash on hand right now. I should also mention that uh, we get a, an exploration tax credit. So for every hard dollar we spend, um, we get 20% back of that the following year. Uh, and we're also in the pine beetle kill area. So that's an additional 10%. So we'll be expecting about another, uh, another cash uh, injection of about $2 million sometime in the summer. So that's a nice, uh, nice little thing to add to our, um, to our cash position. And, and budget wise, we're, we're looking at uh, uh, to spend about 10 million this year, though that could change um, quite quickly. Uh, granted, uh, I mean, depending on what we're seeing here as well. So, um, if, if we start seeing something that that you know we know we're onto something again, then that could that could easily um, up up our uh, our budget there, which of, of course is a good thing. It's a lot of news flow and a lot to like, Gareth. That was a great update. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're very welcome. Anytime, Gerardo. I appreciate, uh, appreciate your support. All right. Chat soon. Will do.